bro. That was no. that was few years ago. No, my guy is the... neck deep in debt. No, no. So How are you going to raise my Nigeria, is, Nigeria is neck deep in gross. Net. You get my point. I have spoken and nobody has discountenanced my position. That Nigeria actually has got a lot of money. But it's not in the right hands. I give you just few examples. There are over 11 trillion naira being held back by revenue generating agencies of government in this country. This official position today. Oil companies that are making billions uh, in profit are owing Nigeria over 4.6 billion dollars as we speak. There's a company known as the uh, Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas Company. It's supposed to be paying directly to the Nigerian government because Nigeria is the investor in that project. And because of the Ukraine-Russian war, they are making, quietly, making a lot of money. But they will tell you that, no, don't say we are making money because we have already priced the gas and sold them at a rate beforehand. No, that's not the way it works. So those guys owe the Nigerian government $12 billion a year. But the problem is that they don't pay to the Nigerian government. They pay to the NMPC. And the NMPC has not paid a dime to the Nigerian government in the last one year, according to the Central Bank of Nigeria. So, because, I, because of huge costs incurred on fuel subsidies. It's not. If you incur uh, customs for subsidy and you are worried about that, going to fix your refinery. The body that says it's incurring first subsidy money is investing $2.7 billion in Dangote refinery. How, does that make yeah, sense? Backing those oh, yes. So, does that make sense? You have refineries that are not working. Yeah? And then you are investing in the refinery built by an individual. So, what's the conspiracy theory? Let's, let's there's no conspiracy. No, no. You see now, this is my problem sometimes with you radio uh, DJs. The moment you hear the answers, you divert. No, I, yes. I, I want us to get deeper into what is the conspiracy theory? You, I know you've been involved. Uh, What's the conspiracy theory about what? Behind not fixing the refinery. It's, it's corruption. It's corruption. They, they don't want to fix the refineries because if you fix the refineries, there's no way you have all these bogus subsidy uh, opportunities for thieves to steal from. It's the same way they operate subsidy from time that they still operate. So, you, for instance, Nigeria has 450,000, you hear me, right? On a daily basis, we dedicate 450, not 45,000, 450,000 barrels of crude to local refining. Local refining. It's still there. So, some people sell this at official rate. It's supposed to be refined locally, but the money disappears. That money by itself ought to be able to take care of subsidy if there was subsidy. So now they're also doing what they call swap deal. These are criminal deals. Government of Kolo has done some bit of work on helping some of these things. Is that a distraction? That is a distraction. There's no country, serious country in the world, that would give the control of its territorial areas to a private security company. You are just saying to the world that I don't have a navy. Or I've just privatized my navy. You know, those ones are just distractions. The people who are involved in carrying out the theft of oil crude, they're not government on Polo's level. They are in Asso Rock. They are in NMPC. Did you not hear the Nigerian customs say that the NMPC is lying? This is the official position of customs as to, with regards to the number of. Uh, uh, gallons or is it liters of petrol that they claim they import and consume in Nigeria that they, according to their records there's n we don't consume that many so where do the rest of the millions of over imported uh, petrol go to they are all stolen so what the NPC does simply is they say we are importing 60, li 60 million liters of petrol and there's a subsidy for it. So they deduct that money. So they subsidize per liter, right? And if you are not importing 60 million liters, you have taken the money, you have subsidized what does not exist. So, and custom is helping you to get out of that quagmire by saying, no, 
according to our records, because we are the ones at uh, the Not borders, the yeah. we are only importing, let's say, 20 trillion, I mean, 20 million liters. But the NMPC is taking from you extra 40 million liters of subsidy. Even if it is subsidized by 10 naira, you multiply 40 trillion by 10. That is what was stolen from you on a daily basis. And nobody wants to solve the problem. It's not conspiracy theory. This one is science, mathematics. Okay. Uh, for those just tuning in, I have with me in the studio the presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, Mr. Moyele, to discussing his plans and also prospects uh, that um, his plans and prospects for the presidency in 2023. And let's let's take a look at you say that there's lots of corruption, night places in Nigeria. How do you intend to fix that? You, if you get the you know, you know, the easier way to answer this question is to just take a look at me. You look at my background and pedigree and what I've done in the past. The amount of corruption I have single-handedly fought in this country. You know, today, the central bank governor, uh, Godwin MFL, has been accused of uh, not just corruption but terrorism, that he's financing terrorism. And the accusation did not come from Shore, it came from the secret police in the country, and they are looking for him. But do you know that in 2019, prior to my detention, I detected and published through Sahara reporters a 500 billion naira theft from the central bank. That was the much that his tenor was supposed to be renewed. And it was ignored. The guy who republished it, George Uber, was arrested and kept in detention for 102 days. Tell us about that. Yes. Do, do you have sufficient proof of that? Of course I have. Not only do I have sufficient proof, I have audio of it. Audio of him, the central bank governor, having conversation with senior bank officials like, we have lost money. Or, you know, If it's something you're interested in, you can Google it. And how are we going to do it? They stole this 500 billion Naira and covered it up, covered it up. So that's just an individual. What else do you want me to do for the country? You know, how many corruption stories have I unedited myself? How many, you know, whistleblowing have I done uh, through the media platforms? Our reporters, but our reporters have sent governors to jail in this country. There's probably no corruption story that has sent people to jail today that I wasn't privy to exposing. In fact, some 10 years ago, on Al Jazeera, I had a shouting match with Don Yokupe. I said, you know, guy, you're a thief. And he laughed at me and said, you know, I'm a joke, people are using it. 10 years ago, he was sent to sentence from for the same crime. You know, but in my view, justice, uh, justice denied. And when eventually he was sentenced, somebody who stole 720 million naira was asked to refund 13 million. I'm just, I'm just giving you that so that you can understand that I'm tired of it telling people that I can fight corruption because I actually know how to do it and I've done it on a private scale. So you can imagine what I'll be capable of doing when I become president. But then you also have uh, the judiciary to contend with. But they use, the judiciary use my report to convict people now. Okay. But you know, for, for long, take a look at uh, what has happened with the audio of Carlos Cruz. Mm. At some point, roughly about 13 years spent, and then now they have to go through the trial. That length of time is enough for anybody's life to understand or you know go up, and also a long term for anybody to you know redesign ways of. No, I, I completely agree with you. So my kind of reform will also involve judicial reform. judicial reform. There's no way that you try a corruption story for 13 years. Even in the U.S., that witnesses will not disappear, or they can't, uh, or the person that you are trying may not even may, may not have died. I think there's a former deputy governor who was undergoing trial for corruption in Plato State. He died during the period. See, we couldn't recover the money. We couldn't convict him. So, the judicial reform that is necessary uh, is also part of our agenda, so that people can get justice delivered on time. There must be a timeline for delivery of. Uh, just judgment on cases like that. We, you know, we're already doing it with election cases. 
60 days, right? 90 days. So we'll get a conviction so that by the time you get to the Supreme Court, we, we, it will only be like a year. And the Supreme Court will be very clear in saying, look, you know, there's a timeline to deliver your, your case, your, your, your judgment. And, you know, I have a case in court, several cases, but I have a case of treason in court that has lingered since 2009. It's moving from judge to judge. It's on the third judge now. The last judge did not even invite me for, uh, for, for that trial. Okay. And that's, that's unjust because my life, like you said, has been held up. I, mean, I haven't seen my kid's wife for four years, and I don't have any path to justice because judges are not even calling the case. All right. Uh, I know some people have been trying to call 805 um, you can also try 0805-588-193 For those who want to send um, WhatsApp messages or calls from the diaspora, you can add plus 234 9931 Those are some of the numbers to call. Well, before I get to my next question, somebody and they're asking that is it true that during one of your court appearances um, there was a picture of you being injected with something and they want to know if it's very well okay. No, I, I think someone was holding a pen <laughs> and you know, he looked as if he was trying to stab me. He's actually a senior lawyer and I met him later. But when we got back to the DSS because of the huge interest on the way I was abducted from the court, they too were scared and they we immediately called in the doctor to check if I had any injuries. There was none, and I made that clear. Uh, there's no point making up a story that's untrue. All right. Uh, you have a court like following amongst uh, students, especially uh, in this part of the country. They've had one of the longest strikes. Institutions shut down across the country during this administration. And um, some experts have said education is too cheap in Nigeria, too cheap to fund. And I mean, too cheap. People pay so little to fund education in Nigeria. I'd like to know what's your angle on that. That's not true. That's not true. Do you think we can effectively fund tertiary education? Absolutely. For absolutely everybody. We, we can fund education for free for everybody. Uh, because there's an education budget in the country. And we've looked at it. And it's nothing compared to, you know, the amount of money stolen by individuals. So you disagree with the idea of having students in I do. Um, if they, they have this in other countries, I think. Oh yeah, I took I took student loans before, uh -huh. and countries that have student loans are fighting against it, like the U.S. The U.S. government right now has got a loan forgiveness uh, forgiveness uh, program in place, the Biden administration, because it's, the loan is a huge pressure on people. It doesn't allow people the freedom to use the education the way they want. That's it's loan system in the U.S. that force people to go and work for somebody. And it kills creativity. You know, I've discussed loan before, and my own idea of a loan, if ever you get a loan, it will be additional to grants and support system that we have uh, for people who are going to school. Right. Yes, all right? So what I'm trying to say is that if you can give students loans, it will be for students to, it will be conditional, you know. So if I want to make you become a teacher, you take a loan. But you must teach for four months, I mean, for four years after you get the loan. Otherwise, you pay us back the loan, conditional loans. All right, let's take this call. Hello, good morning. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, we didn't pick that early enough. 0805 592 And you can change that to 23 as well. I have Mr. Moya literally here with me, Mr. Lee. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yes, good morning, you're live on the call. Good morning, we can hear you loud and clear. Oh, please, you may be... Yes, we can hear you, good morning. Uh, okay, you can also try the other line, plus 234-8099-931-931. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Bit of difficulties uh, getting across the lines there. But let's
this um, okay so you talked about students and saying you don't have any no no I, I, I propose that everybody in higher institution should get at least a hundred thousand naira as study grants per year per year yes a hundred thousand study grants yes per, sem I mean, per semester so if you have two semesters you get two hundred uh, thousand naira right, let's, let's and it's like three hundred dollars per student hello I'm fine. Good morning. What's your name? Yes. Good morning. Um, happy New Year if you're happy where you are. I don't understand why, and I don't know why you want to waste your vote. I can hear you loud and clear. Well, you know, he has not started the question. If you know that I represent a different kind of ideology, why would I be in coalition with people of the same ideology who have put Nigeria in a condition that you it know is? He's getting the balls. Uh, have you tried? Did, did you, can you repeat what you just said? That it appears that he's getting the balls. No, I, I don't know where Social you, media. You know, social media is not. When you look at the polls, in about three, four polls. I've told, I've said, two I've said this before, you know. People who are campaign managers for candidates have no business conducting poll. Peter Said Atedo. Peter Said Atedo mm -hmm. is Peter Obi's campaign manager, even though his name may not be on his presidential campaign list. They are just out there rigging polls for themselves and they have come to a conclusion. Of, of course, I do. And I'm challenging him to meet me anywhere so that I can present it to the public that he works for Peter Obi. In fact, he was the one who went and procured SDP for Peter Obi before they later found the Labour Party and joined the Labour Party uh, and arranged whatever they arranged and put. Uh, they claimed that uh, uh, was a Patu Tommy was already a campaign that was presidential candidate of the Labour Party, which is a lie, and he stepped down for Peter Obi. I think the party told me arrived the Labour Party the same day Peter Obi arrived the Labour Party. <laughs> so how could they have? Uh, but that's not the conversation for today. I'm just responding to that individual who said, "I'm sorry, uh, if already you know that I'm different, you know, and that's the truth. Why would you ask me to go and join Kwakwaso? Kwakwaso has been PDP. Uh, I think it was APC at the point. It's one of the longest serving government officials in this country. What has he done for the country? I will now go and join him." So I will elevate his failure to the public. Peter Obi has been PDP. He was Afga, came back to PDP. As of uh, two weeks before their primaries, he was still in the PDP. How do you tell me that such a person wants to rescue power from PDP? If, for instance, let's say for instance today, there's a deadlock in the election, and Peter Obi need to match with somebody, who do you think he will match with? You go back so to PDP. If there's a deadlock, who will you merge with? I won't merge with anybody. You're just going to leave it. Well, if there if there will be a deadlock, it will be between us and them. You have to. 
slightly over 33,000 votes. In there was no election in 2019. I keep telling what you. What numbers do you think you have now? What numbers I, do you think? Can you, you can you listen? Election? Can you listen to me? There was no election in 2020, 2019. That was a selection. So whatever numbers you saw was allocated to candidates as it suited uh, the agenda of those who conducted that election. And that's why you keep warning the public. Don't gloss over it, you know, because lives are going to be at stake again in 2023. Okay? All right, uh, 0805-085-5888192. 0805-588192. You can also send messages uh, at this point. We will take them. I have Mr. Mwele Shore with me in the studio. 0809-931-931. That's the other line. 0809 931 931 uh, you've talked about I know you've mentioned um, you're giving out your thoughts on the endorsement of Peter Obi by Richard Obasanjo and some other uh, big persons in government but again I'd like to yeah how do you intend to totally upset the political elite but first let's let's take this call hello how do you intend to upset the political elite in this country? Right? First, with, with the question marks that you see persist around the electoral system. First, I always, always upset the political class, be they in the military or during the civilian period. And they acknowledge that all the time as well, that, you know, whenever they wanted to do something against Nigerian people, so our reporters sure always came and uh, spoiled business for them, you know. Uh, and it's not going to be different this time. Right? That's why we are calling for election, not selection. I know some of you refuse to accept that they are not fair in conducting these affairs. And this is why I also constantly appeal to the press, to the media, because I'm part of the media in some ways, that what you are doing is a disservice to the country when you keep promoting the same failed individuals who don't speak to ideas, who don't even discuss manifestos or how to promote this country or who have terrible past that you cover up and you promote them as the real deal or the big deal uh, and you, when you have alternatives you start talking down the alternatives how many votes are you going to get you don't, you don't know which votes I'm going to get if they f allow free and fair elections you'll be shocked at how many people are willing to vote for liberty and freedom in this country you'll be shocked that's the reason why they don't want to conduct free and fair elections Hello, good morning. All right, good morning, Joshua. Please, can you turn on the volume on your radio, sir? All right, go ahead. Yes, I can. I can, Joshua. Yes, we can hear you. Please, turn on the volume on your radio, sir, so that we can hear you clearly. Call back 0299 uh, 931 The other number is 0255 We're also streaming on Facebook at uh, Adam Imogo 931 FM uh, on Facebook. Okay, uh, so you, you were saying something. Yes, yeah, I, I was talking about you know how to hold the electoral body to account and make sure that they conduct transparent and free elections so that we can critically continue to see what makes sense uh, in terms of candidates in this country. You said they don't want to hold free and fair elections yes. in this country. Yeah, they because they've never really had uh, free and fair elections. Are they independent body? So but who are those behind the scenes that you, no, it's you claim that they want to hold free and fair elections? It's we, we have the polls coming in. Okay. I hope that the network is favorable. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yes, go on. What's your name first? Good morning and uh, happy new year to you.
what I think is that you can they cannot rest they cannot uh, take power from those who give them power and that's very clear they are part and parcel of the same power system in the country political system Peter B is co-joined with PDP there's no question about it okay. yes Take this one. Hello, good morning and yes good morning please turn down the volume on your radio set please good morning to you yes I can hear you clearly I, I didn't get that what's the name okay Felix all right Felix quickly quickly Please go on, you can hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's take this one. Hello, good morning. Hello. Okay, let's answer this one. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yes, good morning. From Badagri. All right, go on. Good morning, sir. You have just about 40 seconds to do that. Yes, go ahead, please. Thank you very much. All right. In, in just okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's just to wrap things up. If you, if you don't get to win, and maybe either of these political parties that you claim are not right for Nigeria to get to win, how would you feel? And also, just to also wrap things up, if 
you get an offer from any of them to work with them, what do you take it? No, I won't take an offer. I'm, I'm not looking for a job.